How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can get yourself out of poverty. A lot of you may not realize this, but the fact that you're watching me through this YouTube channel means you have a certain income level that you can actually afford internet. People that are in poverty oftentimes do not have access to internet at all, but I hope this video somehow reaches these people. Maybe you can use a public internet somewhere and still be able to find this video and maybe I can help a little bit. If you look at the demographics of people that actually watch YouTube, actually 46% makes more than $75,000 a year for household income. And actually 9% of the people that are watching YouTube actually makes 150K or more. Now you got the rest here that makes between 25 and 75K, but you do have about a 5% sliver of people that makes less than 25K. Now these people are the one that are, you know, kind of on the edge of poverty, but the federal poverty limit is actually $11,670 per person. If you have one additional per person in the household, then you add another 4,000 some dollars. So if you have two people, it's actually $15,670. If you earn less than that, then you're considered in poverty. Now let me get this clear, I probably don't know what it feels like to live in poverty because even when I was young, I was making a small wage. However, my parents were supporting me and so that does not really count. However, as you can see from my channel, I have a certain affinity towards how to get your finance as well. So I'm gonna put my brain and just think about what you can actually do to dig yourself out of this situation. Now I don't claim to have all the answers, but I want to just give a few suggestions. The first thing you can do, of course, you can just get roommates. Now, if you're only making $12,000 a year, it's really hard to pay for rent, basically. So the way I would try to go about this is get as many roommates as possible. Perhaps you can fit more people in the room so you can divide the costs. At certainly, at that income level, you can't really go, oh no, I don't like this, I wanna live alone, I just can't deal with it. No, that's not an option, really. If I had a job already, if it's part-time or something, I might consider uh, not renting for a while and just living in the car. I know this sounds a little like uh, sketchy, right? But it's something that's not permanent. I would think of it as, oh, I'm just gonna do this for a short time and build up a little bit of savings so that I have a little bit of buffer room so that I can move forward with my life. I say this because getting an employee sometimes requires an address, so they need to mail stuff to you. So you can give them this address that you're renting Okay, later on after you're working for a while, then, then you go, oh, I'm not living there anymore. It's a good way to get a small amount of emergency fund just to get yourself going. Of course, I've never done this, so I don't know what it feels like. I've known people that have done this before where they're living in a van or a car or something and you get the membership at a gym and that's where you take your showers. Another tip would be you really, really got to make your own food all the time. Never, ever go out to eat. I know it takes time to make your food. But if you watch my other videos, you can actually make healthy foods in a very short amount of time. I often come home and then I make stuff from scratch and it only takes me 15 minutes. For example, just for lunch just today, I had a lamb shabu shabu hot pot with some cucumbers and rice. Um, all of that totaled about $1.50 in ingredients. Of course, I had to have a slicing machine, which you may not have the privilege of having a slicing machine. But of course, if you're in that situation, then you just have to cut it with a knife. And same thing, then you can still uh, prepare all this within about 15 minutes. The thing to realize with buying cheap food that's available in your area, you might not have a lot of fresh food to buy, nor veggies and things like that. It might be really out of your way or it might not exist at all in the low income areas where you live. Even more important is to try really, really hard to get fresh ingredients. Get whole chickens because those are the cheapest and unmarinated ones because the marinated ones are apparently older. It's like a way to mask the oldness of the food. So don't get marinated um, steaks or chicken or whatnot from the supermarkets. When you look at all the food that's available in the low income areas, it's usually the liquor store, and then you have a whole bunch of fast food everywhere. The way I look at this is you walk into one of the liquor stores, mostly they sell like all these packaged foods that's really unhealthy for you. Sugary drinks, that's just sugar for your body, and the sugar is not very nutritious at all. It doesn't have all the vitamins, doesn't have you know all the fibers that you need, because you should not really look at the fast food just for the price on the surface. It's actually the price of that plus your health later on. Now the cost of the medical bills that you're gonna end up paying if you keep on eating the fast food is gonna be 10 times more than the cost that you see today. 
let's say the hamburger is one dollar it's really ten dollars after you pay for diabetes medicine uh, surgery or whatnot and guess what later down the line if you cannot pay for the surgery or the medicine and stuff to make you well again well that's that's the end of your life actually if you cannot pay for the medical expenses you basically borrowed against your life because you pay one dollar now you're actually taking nine dollars out of your future life now what about credit cards if you are on the borderline and you don't have much savings you really should not even consider getting a credit card borrowing from a credit card it's kind of like being a drug addict it's okay for now it's going to tide you over just now but later on it's going to be 10 times worse so do you want to take the pain now or do you take want to take a lot more pain later so you should not even think about borrowing from a credit card if you don't have enough to pay off of it no matter the circumstances now if you manage to save three months of living expenses via living with roommates uh, buying more healthy foods that are lower cost saving in whichever way then you might consider using a credit card if you know you're going to be responsible and paid off every single month now if you have three months of savings in the bank but you owe the same amount of the credit card that's not having three months of savings this is you need to cancel those out first pay it off first and then have that amount then you should consider getting a credit card now let's say you have five hundred dollar of credit card debts and then five hundred dollar of cash now what do you do with it do you just put it all in the credit card and just pay it all off then you have zero left what i would do is just look at maybe like a month or two worth of expenses that you have and then take the rest of that maybe three hundred dollars or something and just pay off the credit card because you need to hold a little bit of cash at least because you don't want to take cash back out of the credit card because that'll cause you to have some uh, cash withdrawal fees from the credit card so you just keep enough cash you keep going for a month or two and then the rest should really go towards the credit card so that you're not paying interest because you really need to prioritize paying off the credit card first now if you somehow manage to gather three months worth of expenses this is really helpful in helping you weather all the un unexpected expenses like something breaks that you absolutely critically need then you can take that money out and pay for it and you won't have to borrow against a credit card or whatnot so it's like kind of like a safety thing and having that amount helps you save money actually because then you can actually spend it on things that when you do need it you can actually buy stuff when things go, go on sale the list goes on it really helps to have like a little buffer for you to weather any kind of needed expenses now what if you get yourself in a situation where you cannot pay the bills and you just don't have enough let's say you're 100 dollars short you take in some income you after you pay all the bills then you're still 100 dollars short should you use a credit card to you know kind of cover it no because once you do that the next month you're gonna be short like another 110 dollars you really gotta look at the credit card kind of like a loan shark once you touch it it's kind of like a drug and you just can't wean off of it you really really need to make sure you don't take it rather than doing that take the pain now yeah let the lights go off or whatever get a roommate or something like that now what can you do to reduce your expenses maybe you're going out to buy food and you're buying the cheapest of the cheapest things already if you somehow buy uh, something healthier it's going to double or quadruple your food cost but i argue you can get cheap and nutritious food just as long as you're willing to cook it and if you have the skill to cook it quickly of course there's other ways to reduce your expenses creatively you could choose to not have a cell phone actually i mean people survive without it you can just use a payphone. you can get a bicycle and ride a bicycle to work the list goes on and if you have trouble thinking of ideas to do something like this please message me and you know maybe i can help you out i've been watching some videos on poverty really just to research on you know what's it like um, the difficulties that people that are in that situation are having the things that could keep you stuck in poverty of course if you have kids and the income is really low and then you have to spend all your money supporting the kids then you're just at this spot where all the money coming in is being used so then you're just stuck right there you could be stuck because you dug yourself in a hole because you ate all the bad fast foods and all the sugary drinks which deteriorated your health and then your medical bills piled up so in that sense you could also be stuck that way because the cost of all those medical bills is kind of like working against you for the income that you're taking in another one is if you have a too high a credit card debt already so then the interest rate the amount that you owe outweighs what you're bringing in so this is kind of like a burden that 
you shouldn't have taken in in the first place. This is something that drags you down. Of course, if you have a drug, gambling addiction, or smoking, all those things are really costly. And if you just kind of wean off of those, then it would actually save you a lot more money. Okay, so those are the things that could keep you in poverty. What are the things that you can actually do to get you out? For one, you can reduce expenses creatively. Number two, increase your income. Now, how do you increase your income? You can work hard outside of your day job. I know you may not have energy to do this, but it's going to be hard at first, but then once you get over that little bit, it's going to get easier and easier because once you start making a little bit more income, then it gets that much easier. And then after that, you make a little bit more, then it gets easier and easier. The very beginning, of course, it's going to be super, super duper hard. And those are the things that you have to overcome to get yourself out of poverty. Skills is what actually makes people money because if you know something that other people don't know, or if you know how to do something that other people don't know how to do, they're gonna pay you money for it. So if you're in poverty and you're working a really low wage job, it may mean that you have zero skills at all. Maybe you have a skill that you haven't been able to earn much from. The idea is to take that skill and earn money off of it, of course. Like for example, if you know how to fix plumbing, for example, you can you know help other people fix their plumbing and make a little side job like that. If you know your way around fixing a car, you can do that. There are a lot of real world skills that you can actually learn on the side without having to actually go to school. As long as you're good at it, you can start small and then it would grow from there. So I hope this helps. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, comment down below, or message me directly if you want to throw around some ideas on how you can improve your life. And for the other 95% of the YouTube audience and likely 99% of the people watching this channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can actually get a free audio book for free. And if you cancel in time, you can still keep the book and you can still help out this channel. I also have a Patreon link over here and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.